Okay, we're coming to you live from Crystal Lake, Illinois, in McHenry County. The mayor is Aaron Shepley. The chief law enforcement agent is Lou Bianchi. The man who did the first reading is probably the most respected man in this town, Bob Blazer. If you don't get the Northwestern Herald, he was above the fold two, uh, two days ago, and his boss is his wife, Rosemary. Okay? <laughs> Uh, he gives not only a uh, great, a great, him and his wife together, I don't know, six, 60 years, 60 years married? I know they're high school, they were, they're high, they were college sweethearts. But I, I say this because they not only give our town a good name, they, they make us look good as, as, as Catholics at St. Thomas. May all of us sincerely model, model some part of our lives on, on their social and cultural and outside the church behaviors. I just came back from Haiti, well, just got back, meaning a week ago, a couple hours from now, a week ago. And one thing I took with me, two, two very important facts. Number one, I'm most grateful for my faith. Of all the things I'm grateful for, today's the Feast of Christ but the King. I would not know this, I would not appreciate this, and I certainly wouldn't worship with you if I did not have the gift of my faith. Uno numero, or is it numero uno? Number one. Number two. It's actually not that hard for me especially, and for, some, for many of you. I, I like coming to church. I like church. I'm churchy. My mom made me churchy. I like it. Now, a lot of people don't want to come to church. That's a whole other issue. We'll spend the rest of our lives trying to crack that nut, trying to square that circle. I like going to church. I like worshiping. I like saying thank you to God. But what I took from Haiti is, for me that's easy. Following the Blazers' example and many others, good people among us, let's go be church out there. Go be church out there. Don't be church in here. It's easy to be church in here. Go be church out there. Don't be afraid of your being church out there. Don't cower. First and foremost, I had to write this down so I can read it. Today is Christ, the Feast of Christ the King. The Feast of Christ the King is not founded on worldly power. You heard out of the mouth of our Savior and Lord, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom was of this world, he said in another place, the Father would send legions, thousands of angels. Let me give you my Grand Avenue translation. Hey, Pilate, you and I would not be having this conversation right now if I was going to take over this unit, this world, this time. You're, 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 excuse me, I apologize. I'm just playing a little Jesus right now from Grand Avenue. Pilate, you're a bum. You are always a bum. I'm the king of the universe. I'm the king and I'm going to show you my kingdom. But he didn't do that. So we're celebrating a king, Christ the king, the feast. It's not founded on worldly power or military might. But I wrote this down so you're going to hear it. Don't leave. But today I summon the power of Christ the King to defeat those enemies of the church, particularly Islamic extremists that seek our annihilation and our Jewish brothers and sisters' annihilation and their own brothers and sisters who share a different brand of Islam's annihilation. How's that for, for a coffee in the morning, huh? He's not, he's not, we're not into power here. Unfortunately, for all my pacifists, brothers and sisters, if you do nothing, you are doing a whole bunch. A whole bunch. Stop. Stop. To do nothing is to do a whole bunch. So I summon Christ the King. I ask you to summon him with me to bring down the power and the, and, and the necessary effect to establish some form of, of aid and relief and help to the countless growing number of refugees and all other ills that face this earth. The, the Feast of Christ the King was instituted in 1925 by Pius XI. It was in response to the growing secularity of the world. He took the title, not exactly, but to the best of my studies, from a movement going on in Mexico at the same time. 
You see, in Mexico around the same time, there was a President Calles, C-A-L-L-E-S, who started a revolution in Mexico, a murderous, bloody revolution, to put down the church. One of his chief means of propaganda was showing a public execution of Father Miguel Pro, saint now, Father Miguel Pro. And right before he died, he shouted out in, in, in Spanish, Viva Cristo Rey! Long live Christ the King. And they shot him. And he took a picture of it. And this quasi-communist government, well, I don't know what they were, they were revolutionaries, they were secularists. They wanted to close down the churches, take care of the priests and nice people like you. The choir would be locked up immediately. They'd be shot immediately. Because they're encouraging you. They're encouraging you to practice your faith. The ushers, boom, you're next. Eucharistic ministers, get in line. There's ranks. They, 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 they eliminate us systematically. Uh, in the face of this, a group of, of Hispanic, of Mexicans banded together. And their mantra was, long live Christ the King. So the Pope, the Pope looking at the world, watching people turn away from religion, he instituted this feast. And this feast comes at the end of the calendar, purposely. The next feast you're going to have is we're, we're going to be in Lent before you know it. we got to eat Thanksgiving, then we're going to be in Lent. Excuse me, Advent, thank you. Thank you. Don't laugh at me if I tell you not to laugh at me. I tell you something's funny, you don't laugh, and you laugh at me and make fun of me. So you like to make fun of me. No, okay. Advent. Advent is coming up. But it, it closes the calendar. We closed it, the liturgical candle calendar celebrating Christ the King. So the, the, the Pope looks out and sees what secularism, what avoiding Christ does. Italy, Mussolini, Germany, Hitler, Russia, Stalin, China. Go on and on and on and on. And, 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 and it morphed. Morphed into ultimately World War II. It morphed in, in, into so many other things. Folks, it's hard to communicate this to the average Joe because the average Joe or Jane got their head buried in the sand. Secularism is a form of religion. What do you mean? I'll tell you what I mean. The way you were wired, the way you were made, God made us all. Whether you like it or not, God made you. Okay? Deny that all you want. You didn't make yourself, your parents didn't make you. They helped. I don't know how you got here. Talk to your parents. I have no idea. But I do know God, God was there and your parents helped. But I do know how you were wired. You were wired to worship. You're either going to worship Christ the King or the Father of Lies. You're going to make a choice. It might be unconscious. You might not even know it. Why should we be surprised when people close the church doors and turn their backs on Christ the King? That tyrants arise. You know, God, and, and, and again, I know I have to walk on eggshells. I'm just the wrong guy for the job. But in the Islamic world, which is over 2 billion people, you know women don't have the right to it. You know this. Why is everybody hiding this? Why are we whispering? Shh. Don't say nothing about the Islamic religion. You know women don't have the rights you have in the United States of America. You know the justice system isn't what it is in the United States of America. You know the social mobility isn't what it is in the United States of America. Shh. Quiet, don't talk like that. You're being a, a xenophobe. You hate all Muslims. You hate all Islam. No, there's two billion people, vast majority. Sorry, my opinion, you can disagree. You get a pulpit one day, you get a microphone. You can, you can give me your speech. You can give me your, your, your theory on this. That they're being controlled. And their, and, their, and, their, and their ability to live a free life of worship is very much highly compromised. And it's sad. And it's sad. And it's growing. It's not getting bad. Again, I don't, know what, I don't know what you see. Read. Who do you talk to? The trajectory. It's getting worse. I made a joke with it. I, I, there's, there's a Vietnam veteran. There's a couple of men in mass this, this uh, evening. I don't want to mention his name. He sits in back, comes every Saturday. I told him. I said, hey, if somebody moves, go after him. If someone comes after me, go get him. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to spook you or get scared. All I'm saying is, either you make Christ the king or someone else is going to fill that void. It might, it might be subtle, but still, it exists. Uh, this religion of, of secularism, there's a creed. You know the creed? Tolerate everything. It's all the same. Do you, do you ever love the creed of the, of the secularists? 
Here's one of their creeds. There's no absolutes, except that one, of course. There's no absolutes. No, you just gave me an absolute by saying there's no absolutes. Alternative lifestyle? all day long. Why can't I respect alternative lifestyle? Why can't I love people with alternative lifestyles and still not want to show it to my children or glorify it or glamorize it? Why can't I get away with that? I love all people. I'm a good, I think I'm a decent Christian. I love people of alternative lifestyles. But why do I have to celebrate with a huge party going down Halstead Street with heaven knows what kind of behavior and show it to my children? And your children. Isn't there, isn't there a way to navigate loving people with alternative lifestyles instead of making that the centerpiece of my entire creed of tolerance? Encourage in the this, this secularist form of religion. You meet these people all the time. I, I turn them off. The coffee club, they get turned off very fast by me. How? Turn my back. Li li no, no, no. Literally. If I find that my ability to communicate the faith is not affecting, is not being, is, is not being received, there's a closed door, I, you can do this. I do it. Use your own strategies. I got someone else to talk to. There's 12 people there. Somebody will listen to me. The, the, the point is, their creed, they encourage disbelief. I think the only thing rewarded more than disbelief in some quarters is unbelief. And that's sad. It's very sad. Disobedience towards authority. Again, I was just in, I was just in Haiti, in Port-au-Prince, in the capital. Santo Five. Google it. Google map it. We never walked into a classroom looking at a person, of, a young man or woman of color, and felt sorry for them, or thought that somehow they were the most disadvantaged. Father, why do you go to Haiti? There's people in the inner city of Chicago. Because a lot of people I know in the inner city of Chicago aren't taking advantage of the opportunities that have been given them. We can talk all day long, why not? That's a, that's a worthy conversation. I go to where people, young people, take advantage of the opportunities. Because we all know this, whether you're in the center of, of Port-au-Prince or you're, you're in, uh, in, 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 on the west side of Chicago, education will always be, and a trade, a technical trade, always be a vehicle up and out, without which we are doomed to repeat ourselves and to continue a cycle of poverty and, sadly, violence. I heard this from, from Deacon Moynihan, and it's too sophisticated, but I'm just going to say it and, and, and move on. It's just very controversial, but, but after what I said in the beginning, uh, it was a piece of cake. It's, it's what Deacon Moynihan said. He's been living in Haiti for 20 years. Imagine that. He's got a big East Coast education. He's got a master's degree. He's, he's, got, he's got everything that this country could afford him in terms of ec ec education. He chooses to live in, 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 in the worst part of, of the Caribbean, in Haiti. He chooses to live there to help this school, 360 ch children in a boarding school. And this is what he says, and it challenges all our, I can't use that word, all our United States sound bites and talking heads from all the various channels. He says, it isn't the rich that exploit the poor. This is, this is Deacon Moynihan talking. He says, the poor exploit the poor. That's a long conversation to have. And I'm sure the rich do their exploiting. But he says, you go into those neighborhoods, it ain't the rich exploiting those people. It's the poor exploiting their own. And it's sad. And when are we going to end that cycle? Answer, let us today, in a particular and special way, turn towards Christ the King. Let us first and foremost live the faith. Faith in a Father's love who gave us His Son. That's our first move. Accept the Father's gift of His Son, Christ the King. Let Him be the King over your own life. Politics will not save you. Unions will not save you. Your social organizations will not save you. God will save us. Let's put our faith first and foremost in Him. Let us make every effort to grow our faith. Grow our faith. If Christ is the King, i got news for you. Mary's the Queen. I hang around so many Protestants at the coffee club. I, 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 play, I, don't, I don't ever, ever, I will never uh, uh, put down Mary. But I play her down. Because it offends the Protestants too much. Mary played a critical role in our salvation. And I'm tired of, of walking on eggshells around Protestants. Because it throws them off. You guys are worshiping Mary. We're not worshiping Mary. Let's, let's pull my hair out. Then you could laugh. That'd be funny, I'm sure. 
It would hurt. It would be painful. The point is, if Christ is our king, Mary is our queen. Can't find Christ? Look for his mother. She'll lead you to him. She always does. Let's be more devoted to our Blessed Virgin. She will help us usher in Christ's kingdom. My friends, let us continue to spread the faith. Don't be afraid. Don't deny Christ the King. Again, it's easy here. It's easy. Look, I say these things in your presence. I will say these things outside of your presence. Please do the same. Say them here and say them there. Say them everywhere. We should make up a song like that. I don't know why it surprises people, though, when God, when God disappears. Tyrants arise. They will always arise. They will always arise. Let's conclude this homily. Never deny Christ the King. In the name of Saint Miguel Pro and all those who continue to suffer because of their faith. Viva Cristo Rey. Long live Christ the King.